In this video, I want to take a look at creating uh, nav mesh surfaces dynamically. So as you're seeing changes, I want the nav mesh to actually update to allow AI characters to follow you. Now the example here, I've created three floors that are separated from each other, so there's slight gaps, and I've created a bridge that can be switched on between these two surfaces I then want the nav mesh to actually span over that bridge to allow the uh, AI character to follow me. That bridge will be switched on by this red button. Uh, on this one, where I've got a slight gap, my player will be able to kind of jump across. I also want the enemy to be able to jump across as well. So that's what we're going to be setting up in this scene. Okay, so the floors are just simple uh, cubes that I've sized. Uh, the bridge, once again, is just a simple cube. Okay, the enemy is a capsule uh, that has a capsule collider and a nav mesh agent. Uh, I've also got a pre-written script for the AI. So it basically will just target the player, set the destination to the player position. So I can now drag the AI script directly onto the enemy. Uh, the player, I'll just manually move that with my uh, in this scene so we can see that and for the actual button um, oh, actually first make sure that the player is tagged as player for this script to work uh, for the button I want to make sure that this has a trigger collider so that I can walk into it also need to give it a rigid body component make that kinematic so it doesn't fall uh, so that I can interact with this now what I want is that whenever I press the button, I want the bridge to switch on and I want the nav mesh surface to update. So I've got a pre-written script for this in the button script. Um, the on trigger enter is used in order to switch the bridge on. And as long as we're using Unity Engine AI, uh, I can then create a new uh, variable of nav mesh surface. I've just simply called my nav surface. You can call yours whatever you like. Uh, and all you have to do is say nav surface, that's that name, dot build nav mesh. And that's the command that will actually rebuild any kind of a nav mesh. So you can do it dynamically. Now, I wouldn't do that every frame as it will diminish your frames per second. I would generally do this whenever you add new items. Uh, now, chances are my enemy and player may very well uh, create like little holes in the nav mesh. So make sure that we give these nav mesh modifiers and make sure that they remove this object from the nav mesh. Same on the player. Also same on the button as well. Oh, I've given that a volume. Don't need the volume. I need the nav mesh modifier and remove that object. Okay, so for the button, I'm gonna drag in this button script script. Uh, and it's expecting a bridge, which is currently switched off so that that can switch that on. And it's expecting a nav mesh surface. Okay, so to create that, it's game object, AI, and the nav mesh surface. Okay, from here, um, if I check my AI navigation, I've made my radius of my humanoid pretty small because this is a relatively small scene. So 0 0.3 is the radius for this character. Okay, so that now I can simply just bake and you can see there what I've got. Okay, so that's the nav mesh surface as I get closer, should be fine. Um, if I switch this off, there is no nav mesh underneath, that's fine. Uh, but you will see that when I switch the bridge on, the bridge does not have any kind of a connection. Okay, so under the button, I'm going to now drag that nav mesh surface directly into there. I also want the ability for the enemy to actually jump across this gap. Now, if we go to game object, AI, we have a nav mesh link. Okay, as soon as I add this, We'll see that we get this little icon of a little line. This is, well, it describes how far the actual character can jump and in what direction. So let's just bring this up. As you can see, it's got a little icon of a bridge on there. Um, and I want to rotate this 
so it's facing this way. Make sure it is kind of lined up with the surface. And what I want to do there is reduce the start point and the end point to get it roughly to the right size. So something like this should be fine as long as it's actually touching one of those blue areas. That will now allow my AI character to actually jump that small gap. Okay, and that's fine. Um, area type walkable, I could, for example, change that to jump, which is fine. Okay, so let's uh, actually test this out now then. So first of all, in my game, I'll get my main camera set up aligned with view so that I can see that. Um, so I'm now going to press play. Jump over to the scene view and my player. Now, if I check my enemy, I forgot to put the player into the slot there. Let me do that. If I try it again. There we go. Okay, the enemy has instantly found my player. So wherever I move, the player is moving. Now I'm going to go and switch on the bridge. And as soon as I switch on the bridge, did you notice how the nav mesh rebaked? And now that character can follow me. If I come over here, the character has to try and go across the bridge. Now, when I come over to this side, uh, if I go all the way up here, notice that the AI character is able to jump across. Excellent. Okay. So that's how you dynamically create a nav mesh at runtime and how you can add these little jump areas for your AI characters. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching.